I'll begin reading verse 26. Now here's Jesus and his disciples, and they're coming to a, a place there called the Gadarean place. Verse 26, and Jesus had just t questioned them about their faith just before this. He asked them, where is your faith? Uh, because Jesus was doing some things and, and they saw him uh, operate with the wind, quieting down and everything. Now, verse 26, and, and they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee, and it forth to land that met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, and neither abode in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High, the Son of God, the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for oft times it had caught him, and, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he should not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there feeding a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would not suffer them to. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devil out of the man and entered into the swine, and her went violently down a steep place into a little lake, and were choked. When they that fed them and saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also had saw it, told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. And the whole multitude of the country Galileans round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and turned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed sought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine old house, and shew how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the city, the whole city, how great things Jesus had done for him. Father in heaven, how how many great things you have done for us. And right now tonight, I am mindful of those great things that you want to do for this congregation of people, me included. Lord, those that are here, those who are not here, may we all be involved in this very important work. There's someone out there that has a devil in them or a demon, or even a spirit that needs to be delivered. There's others who may need comfort and strength. Whatever the need may be, calls us that we can minister to these people in the blessed, glorious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for using us 
wherever we go. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Tonight, I want to ask this question with the title here. I want to ask you this. Is it anything too hard for the Lord to do through us or to us or with us? With that, the title of the message tonight is God's Promises for Thee and Me. God's promise or God's promises for thee and me. These promises are not just for somebody in days gone by. You know, today a real thing hit me today, and I really thought about this. If we claim the same promises somebody else got a hold of, why can't we have them? We have a tendency to say, well, that he was speaking to. But have you ever thought about is there any difference between any of us? The difference is, is the area of faith. That is where the difference lies, in the area of faith. Do you really believe that God Almighty can use you right where you are? Can you believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think? Do you think there's a possibility you may not even been born in a famous family, or you might not have had some famous in-laws that might have been famous preachers, but what can God do with you? What could he do with the man, woman, boy, girl with faith? Now, Abraham had a problem when the angelical host told him that his wife shall bear a child, when she's old and well stricken in years, the Bible says, and Sarah and Abraham both had the same type of problem, uh, they couldn't understand that. We're pretty old, you know, they're pretty, it, the, the day has passed. The time of childbearing is over. We're, we're not capable of fulfilling God's promise. I want to tell you tonight, there's a lot of you sitting in there tonight that are beginning to think that nothing's happening in your life, so it's about over. Wow. Now, Abraham said it's too late, as far as he's concerned, and Sarah also agreed with it. And yet, do you know a lot, that the same group of people that we have recorded in Genesis 18, and so far, the same people in the New Testament talks about Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. And he mentioned the great things about Sarah. Now, you follow the Old Testament. Folks, the Old Testament is the past. That is past. We're talking about New Testament stuff now. Jesus is on the scene. If they could do that, under the Old Testament, what can you and I do in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia with New Testament promises? What can we do? Abraham was asked by Almighty God, Abraham, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Well, now, how would you answer God if he said to you, I want you to do something here in the Sandow Valley. I want you to become an instrument that I can use to split this valley apart, get rid of the religious traditions, all the bondages, and break through everything. What would you say? We you start, well, Lord, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe my age is against me. Maybe something's against me. Maybe I'm too young, too old, too middle-aged or something. Whatever the case may be, it's too something. But did you realize the Lord say to you, is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, uh, Moses declared that he can't speak. He cursed himself. He said, I can't do it. You better not say that, folks. Now I'm saying that 
terribly, I know. But how you know you can't do it? I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Isn't that what the Bible says? He said, is anything do art for the Lord? And then he also said, uh, Jesus said, uh, with man, some of these things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. That's Matthew 19, 26. In Matthew 19, 26, Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. Well, I know that. I mean, I can understand that. But Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible to you in Matthew 17, uh, verse 20. Nothing shall be impossible to you. So it's not impossible with God. Now God's putting the, the uh, responsibility on us. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for you? Really? Are you sure that you can't do it? What makes you think you can't? What makes you think? I tell you, folks, it's going to take faith to get out here in the Shenandoah Valley and, and become mighty, powerful. But we got a great, majestic, glorious God that's going to help us. Folks, let me say tonight, we can do it. We have got to get faith in our prayers. We got to have faith in the Word. The greatest thing in the whole wide world that ever was or ever shall be, on the face of the earth, the greatest thing that ever hit the face of the earth is the Word of God. Thou hast magnified thy Word above all thy name. Who is that Word? Jesus. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us in the person of Jesus Christ. When we use that majestic name, that glorious name, and we go out there, no, I agree. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself, but what I see the Father do, I am going to do. Right. I was thinking about this. Jesus saw that man down in Gadarene country, an evil, demonic, corrupt man, totally insane, incapable of handling himself at all. I wonder tonight if we could see ourselves valuable in the eyes of God. That's important. You see, is anything too hard for the Lord? And God asked Jer uh, uh, Abraham that in, in Genesis 18, 14. He asked that to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 32, 27, almost exactly the same thing. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Stop thinking about the in uh, inabilities. Stop thinking about the time it takes you to get through to anything. Start thinking yourself a valuable creature in the eyes of God. I'm not worthy. Well, I tell you, if you're not worthy, you better get on, on your knees and get a hold of the cross. That's what the cross did. Made us worthy. I see, I see a group of people sitting in there tonight with, with faith. Maybe you don't know it yet, but it's there. I am seeing somebody can do the job. Now, we've been taught somewhat. Now, we're going to put that to practice. I am convinced that you can do it. Are you convinced you can do it? Are you really convinced you can do it? Well, no, you can't do it to yourself. Jesus himself said, I, I myself, I can do nothing. Jesus even said that. So we got to forget all about ourselves and inadequate, inadequacy, and we got to stop thinking about how weak we are. And, and I'm just a woman. Start thinking about something else. <laughs> Think about something else. 
I, I'm only a child of God. That's all I am. And I can't do anything. But with Jesus, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. There's where, there separates the doubter from the faith person. Now, when we begin to understand, we're going through the Shenandoah Valley loosing. We're going to loose things off of the people. It's going to take faith to do it. We're going to remit their sins. I don't care how much garbage has been in their trash can. It's what are we going to do about it? You know, a name has come up to me for a number of years over and over again. That name appeared in my prayer time. Showed up. I don't understand it because this man is not a possibility. He's so religious and he's so messed up in his religion and him and I couldn't get along together at all. Yet his name keeps coming up in my spirit. The man getting older and older and older and older. He's still alive. And I'll tell you what I decided today. But I think it's time now to do something about it. If, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be a day older tomorrow than he is today. And I got to do something about it. The man, I would say at least 88 years old. And I got a notion that he's going to do something going to change a lot of people's minds. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I'm not planning to go talk to him. I'm planning to let the Lord talk to him. I had went up there and remitted that thing over him. And I'll tell you what. I know him well. I know him real well, right in Chandler Valley. I'm going to get him. And you're going to help me, aren't you? Amen. I, I'm just going to tell you his name, John. That's all I'm going to tell you. John. And uh, take the gospel of John and get John. <laughs> that, that, so I believe that our prayers can make John do some thinking. Not everybody works out quite like that. I, there's a man that I wanted to get. I really wanted to get him. And I really had a problem because I really hoped that I could get that man. I worked so hard to try to get him, but I didn't get him. And he died. And you know what I thought about? I just thought about this day. Why do I consider my failures? Why would I, why would I affect you with my failures? I asked Brother Hogan many years ago, way back when we just, well, in fact, I didn't even know him yet. First time I ever seen him in my life. Hey, that wasn't the first time. It was, uh, well, anyway, way back, John. I asked him about some things, and I said, Brother, I want to ask you something. You've had a lot of miracles. Do you have many failures? He said, Brother, we don't talk about failure. We talk about victory. I said, yeah, but... I still want to know you have any figures. <laughs> he said, yes, we do. Not everybody we pray for gets well, but our emphasis is placed on the ones that did and are. And I believe that's going to happen right here in the Central Valley. Let's not think about right. our failure. Right now, I'd like to encourage you all that I think the next time we go out, we're going to go out in a new faith. Yeah. A new faith, a real faith. We're going to really, and you know what I was thinking today? 
I, I know it's, it's Hebrews chapter uh, chapter 12. I got Hebrews chapter 8. It ain't chapter 8, it's chapter 12. Chapter 12, 22, I think it is. Anyway, it says something about innumerable company of angels. 22. Is that 12, 22? All right, innumerable company of angels. All right, how many is in here tonight? Is there, is there an innumerable amount of people in here tonight? But whatever we need, there's an innumerable amount of people. We can't even number the helping hands we got to come. The angels that come to help us. We have innumerable amount of angels that's capable of coming to help us. I like to look at that. For every one of us, if we all took our angel, our personal angel, which all of us have, and I'll tell you what, we can get faith in that angel. He operates heavenly. And he's watching us. And I believe those angels this morning when they see us doing dumb stuff. But I believe it makes them feel good when it says repent. So we may have to repent over our ineffectiveness, our doubts, our fears, our nonsense. And we say, well, you know, we're just so unworthy, you know. We're just unworthy creatures. I don't think that impresses the Lord. What he wants us to say, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, first I want to ask you this. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, no. Then why do you act like you act? Well, but um, you see, uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, I just don't have what it takes. Why don't you? Is anything to our Lord can it? Oh, that's right. I can do all things through Christ and me. That's biblical. No, and you also said, Lord, nothing shall be impossible to you. So then I shift the blame on us. But not only the blame, he's he's shifting the faith over on us. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd say that that mountain be then removed, be cast in the sea. I never met this preacher in my life. I never met him. I heard a lot about him. I knew him through preaching and so forth, but never met him, man. The radio preacher and so forth. And he said, you know, Lord, there's a, there's a hill out here that I just wish was out of the way. And I just decided that I'm just going to believe you to move that hill. And he said, so I just believe the Lord's going to move it because the Bible says is anything do hard for the Lord. And he said, so I got my mind made up I'm going to believe the Lord's going to move it. I'm not planning to get bulldozers in here and move it. I'm going to ask the Lord to move it. So he said, I got my church people to agree that that hill's in our way. We want it moved. So they agreed with me, and we asked the Lord to move that hill. And we just went back and believed. He said, I believe the Lord's going to move that hill. That's a lot of faith, brother, says there. He said, somebody come in, said, uh, that hill here, does the church own that hill? He said, yes. He said, would you sell me that hill? He said, what are you going to do with it? He said, we'll level up and make a, some kind of a thing there. He said, you're going to move the whole hill? Yeah, we're going to level it down. He said, you sold, I sold it to you. He said, you know what? That hill was remote. (laughs) 
you know, I wonder if maybe, well, now, I don't know, just, I just heard the other day about certain, certain man, yeah, your slandering tongue got you, didn't it? Now you lost your faith in that person ever getting him saved or anything because you just heard something. Folks, watch how you hear. Watch what you hear. You can't get faith in all those slandering tongues. You, somebody called doubt peddlers come around. Well, you don't expect that to happen, though, yeah. Why not? You're crazy. Well, maybe so. I kind of enjoy being crazy. A definition you got in the way. Now you think about uh, you. You don't expect that to happen, do you? Well, yeah, I do. I'm expecting a revival in the Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, before the Lord comes back, not after. I'm expecting that we're going to be one of those that's going to move that mountain. <laughs> How many doubters we got in? Let me see your hands. Oh, you're scared to miss it? How many faith people got in there tonight? Oh, my. All right, we're going to move something. Going to move all doubts and fears out of the way, right? Yes. Trample one to foot. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will trust and not be afraid. Next time I go out here, I'm expecting something to happen. But suppose you don't feel anything. I'm not going to be feeling. I'm going to fight. Well, but um, there's other people that tried to pray for this, and, you know, there's other people. Well, I happened to be a preacher one time. It's kind of a little bit shaky on faith in. And... Um, there's an evangelist come up to him and said to him, <clears throat> you know, he said, uh, if you get invited down to such and such a church, don't go. That's the hardest bunch of people I've ever seen. It's a pretty good-sized church. But I mean, those people are about as dead as they come. I had revival meetings down there, and I mean to tell you, those people just don't mind to nothing. And he said, all right. So he said, if they call you, just tell me they're not calling. Well, he said, all right. So he said, I feared, I had a fear that they're going to call me. <laughs> I got a fear they're going to call me. That which I greatly feared to come by me. And he said, I was in my office and the phone rang and I said, hello. He said, this is Pastor so-and-so. Oh, he said, I grabbed my head and I said, oh, Lord, no, no. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, could you come and hold revival meetings at our church? He said, I jumped down and said, yeah. Who do you want him? Worked out a plan. I went down to that pretty good-sized church like that one I met out in Indiana. He said, I went down there. He said, I'm telling you, you talk about a bunch of people with stuck up and what have you. He said, I hung in there. He said, one I was there, the pastor said to me now, I go on the radio at 11 o'clock. So the church service has to be over 11 o'clock. And he said, all right. So he said, we plan to make sure that the church is ready at 7 o'clock because they go right on the live, you know, in a, in, a, in a half hour, well, an hour, at 11 o'clock. And I, I did, well, whatever. He said, that time got closer, and he said, I mean, people was getting saved all over the place. I mean, the anointing power of God come in there, and he said, them hard-hearted people come up there weeping, but he said, I'll tell you what broke the whole thing. 
He said, this is what really broke that meeting all to pieces. He said, there's a boy come to me, and he said, Vangelis, would you pray for my dad? Uh, he needs to get saved. Would you just pray for my dad? And he said, well, yeah, I'll pray for you that. He said, listen, my dad's got to get saved. He said, it hinders me in life. I've got to see my dad get saved. He said, so I watched him. His dad came in and sat right down the side of his son. Hadn't been to church for who knows when. He came in because his son invited him. And he said, I saw his son say something to him, and he just went and grinned. No, I'm not interested. He said, after a while, I'm still up there trying to talk. And I say, won't you go forward? He grinned at his son. He said, I'm praying. Break that man. And he said, after a while, I never seen this happen in my life before that evangelist said, he's dead now. He told me, he said, who ever heard of such a thing? He said, that boy got down on his knees, went over and got his dad by the legs, said, Dad, please give your heart to the Lord. Please don't go to hell, Dad. Please don't go to hell, Dad. He said, about that time, big tears started running down his dad's face. Dad gets up, walks up, gets saved. He said, when that man, old hardened sinner, got up there, he said, I mean, that church broke loose. They saw the tears. They saw what happened. They knew what was taking place. They watched it. They saw that boy kneel down in church, begging his dad to get saved. And he said, I mean, we had people all over the place. So the time come that the, we go on radio, and the preacher went up to the mic and said, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have time to go on the radio today. We're setting people saved. <laughs> so they just left it on. And he said, I mean, that was that come through that place and revival struck that whole territory and tore that church to pieces and all its division. Folks, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord to do in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia? Is anything too hard for the Lord to do with your callous toward if it is callous? Tonight, tonight, this prayer meeting evening, we are going to break through a barrier. Tonight, not tomorrow night, that's too late. Tonight, we're going to do something tonight. I'd like for those unworthy people out there to get worthy quick because we're in Egypt. The weakness, the weak ones, get strong quick. Be you strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Get strong quick, we need you. I, I believe today is a changing point of somebody sitting in there today. We're going to need us. We're going to need us. And I, we're going to pray. We're not going to pray. Dear Lord, help us as we go out through the shadow of whatever. Help us to break down the strongholds. No, 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 no. We're not going to do a rhythm. Uh, we're not singing. We're be, we're talking. In the name of Jesus, I break that power off of you right now. You will not stay in your traditional bondage, and in Lord. You think we've got any faith for that, folks? That we remit those sins. We go that I remit that sin off of them people. I remit that slandering tongue, that gossiping tongue that's going coming against us, so people won't even come. I break that thing off now in the name of Jesus, name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, including John. 
that I talked about earlier. We can't do it alone, but with heaven, innumerable angels, we can do a whole heap. I am expecting great things to happen before the end of this month. I just see an innumerable amount of angels like to help us. We can we can remit those sins. Well, that that slanting lady and that red man, and all no stop judging. That Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged. For with judgment you will judge, you will be judged. You can't help them. You can't no head. There's no help for that. They ain't gonna hold it. We're not gonna talk like that. We're gonna talk faith. Faith just speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend up to heaven and bring Christ down from above? Or who shall go, say, who shall bring Christ up from the dead? But what says it? The word is not thy, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so is John going to be saved. Not you, John. I'm talking about that other John. And so is some of the other people that don't look like can be helped. Right over there, above Dayton, lived a man that used to turn me inside out, so to speak. He, he was just a man that had a personality. I just couldn't take it. I mean, I, I couldn't take it. I, it took the grace of God to even think of him. He, he just turned me off. And I'm a young man, and he turned me completely off. And I thought, boy, that old man. I, I moved to Georgia, down to Georgia, down to where I just came from the other day. He, he had somebody call, could I come to your, could, to, I come to your house for lunch on Sunday, that's back in the Sunday days. I said, who? I said, are you sure? He wants to come to my house? Yeah. Henry, Henry. All right, Tim, go on. I told my wife it must be a misunderstanding because I can't even stand the man. <laughs> then I got to think, you know, I'm never going to get anything done if I have that kind of attitude. That kind of attitude is going to trap me. So I said, all right, I'm going to treat him nice. I don't care what he comes like. That old man came to see me, sure enough. And we ate our lunch and he said, uh, Dan, could you and I go outside by ourselves when I turn to the pecan trees? I said, yes, we can. And I, he said, Dan, what have you got? You've got something. I said, yeah, you know, Henry, you know what happened to me? I got born again. He said, you did. Explain it. I said, and I began to talk to him about the way of salvation because I was so winner anyway at the time. I, was, I knew how to do it because I'd been there. You know, that old man said, you know, what amazed me, how'd you get your boys to be such gentlemen and so forth? I said, Jesus. He said, I've never seen anything like this in my life, he said. I said, Henry, you know, you're in the old order of Mennonite church, and I'm not. And I will tell you, you can have victory or whatever. I'm not sure what he said to him, but anyway, 
And he, he really got the warning about this thing. So I told him I'm coming back to Virginia. I'm coming out to Virginia to see my parents here before too long. And uh, I don't know when. Well, he found out I was going to be at my dad's place, and he said, he called up my mother and said, would you tell Daniel Roach to come to my house, him and his wife and family, come to my house? And I said, yeah, this is getting to be quite interesting. So went over, and his wife, I'd been there before. I, his wife is an excellent cook. I mean, he, she's better than number one. And... Uh, Anyway, we ate, went in, sat down at the, down at the, uh, the seats, well, the sofas or whatever. He said, my brother-in-law was about to come along too, and he said, you know, brother, I got saved. Hey, I got saved. Brother, I got saved! I got saved! And I, I just about embarrassed. I thought, well, <laughs> all right, you got saved. <laughs> you know what? I mean, he got saved too. That's all he said, I got saved. And his wife got saved too. You know, soon after that, the Lord called him home. And I'll tell you what, listen, I decided that is anything too hard for the Lord? I decided that we give up too quick. You, you've been praying about something for, for so long and you, you just about thought, well, I guess it's over. I guess that's what that old man in the tomb thought. Tomb dweller. I, I'm afraid there may be tomb dwellers in here. I don't know. Get out of the tomb. Come on, you're not going to get much done in the tomb. We don't want no tomb dwellers because they get trouble. They don't have much faith either. I got a feeling that somebody in here needs some stirring up of faith. I remit all unbelief over you and I bind faith on you. Lord God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, I, I bring the holy written word of God to be bound to the heart of all my brethren and all my sisters from the youngest to the oldest that can understand. Praise God, glory to God, hallelujah. No matter who you are tonight, I just know God can use you. Well, but I, I tell you, don't get too far out because I've been pretty bad in my time. And God saved me from all my sins and all my iniquities and all my crazy, dumb, stupid stuff. And I think tonight, tonight I am free, free, free. And truth had made me free. Yeah. I would say I'm no God. I'm not worthy. But truth said, you've been to Calvary. That makes a difference. You've got to have faith. And it's right there. It, the seed of faith is right in you right now. Do you have loved ones that need to be saved? Get that remitting business into you and start remitting those sins and speaking victory to those people. They can't hear you, but heaven can. An innumerable company of angels. It's waiting for direction. What do you reckon they do for a living? They work for you. I wonder what it would look like to, to see a hundred billion angels sitting out there not doing anything. I wish I could do something, but they're too lazy. All right, come with me. 
And I'll tell you what, I am going to say, I will tell you this story yet. I will tell you, there's a fella that they said to him, all right, if you're going to pastor a church, why don't you start a little church down yonder? He said, okay. So I want to make sure I got the record straight because I want to hear it from him or from them. It's straight from them. I want to hear it myself. And he went down and started a church. Nothing else, just the church started down the outer. And this young man said, just coming out of seminary, this young man said, all of my people and I was out working streets all over the place, go to every town, everything we could do, knock on doors. He said, in one year's time, we have record that we knocked on 38,000 doors, that one church. We baptized a whole host of people. Got a whole lot of people say, I, that bothers me, because I heard that many years ago, way back yonder. That bothered me. Somebody, 38, that, I, if Brother Kevin got up here and said, you know, folks, uh, I'm planning for all of us together to knock on 10,000 doors this year. I mean, during the next 365 years. <laughs> Not years. <laughs> the next 365 days. And, and, and what would you do? We've got ten, that goal is 10,000 people. Now, brother, don't get weird. <laughs> you know what? There's something about a vision. You can get that vision across to people. I am not going to say I can't get the visa across to you because I know there's an innumerable bunch of angels. I really thought about that today. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of angels want to work for me. They're not going to get paid for it either. They're already paid for God, not me. Oh, I'm telling you, I thank God for innumerable angels. Hey, now listen, what is your name tonight? Think about this. There's an innumerable company of angels that's available to you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Innumerable number of angels available to you. Innumerable. How many is? I don't know. You can't count them. I wonder what the Lord got stationed over this church. If they're not going to use them out there, we're going to use them here. Right. Let's keep heaven busy, shall we? He said they're in human, well, helping us. Oh, I like that thought. I am going through the Shenandoah Valley with you all helping. And we are all going to work together in unity. All of us are going to do it God's way and we're going to go out there and loose the bands of wickedness over the people. We are going to gather, say, there's not a one of us is ever hoping never here again, never here. We can't do it. I can't. Well, I'm worshiping any of you in here and I can do it because they can do all things through Christ strength me. I may even walk down the street by myself. You ain't gonna do it, I'll do it. If, if you're not gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But I hope we all work together. Brother Rose, how much you gonna pay? Oh, you get big wages. 
Every soul you win, there'll be great wages to that. Don't be like the prodigal son. Came home and his brother said, eh, he wasted all his substance on them women and stuff like that. I want nothing to do with him. The father says, son, I want you to accept your brother. We're too religious. We're just too good. Maybe we ought to see our inabilities in an efficiency and start binding truth to us. Start getting the, the victory by loosing off of us all the junk and all the rest of the stuff. Folks, you and I can do it. Together we can do it. We need teamwork. We need teamwork. That means you work with me, I work with you, there's teamwork. It doesn't matter who gets the credit. What we want is to all glory and all honor, not say all to God be the glory. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about really meaning business. The Lord is going to get all the glory. There's no one person going to get the honor for nothing. We're all no good without Jesus, but with Jesus, we're a whole bunch. I love to think about, you know, I, I have the, the ability, the strength, the power, the anointing, the authority. Many people are bound with fear and questions and doubts and, and what have you. Their prayer seems to be unanswered and they're not getting anywhere. Tonight, I want you to pray in faith. Well, suppose you don't see anything. Suppose you do. But suppose you don't have no, don't keep records on failure. Keep records on, I borrowed that off Brother Hogan. Keep records on your successes. You and I can do it. I'm going to help you. You help me. And we're going to encourage each other on faith. And we can do it. Husbands, this would be a good chance to tell your wife we can do it together. You know, there's some of the people out there that's going to have this to deal with. You're going to have to deal with this. Some of the people are hurt. Their daddy said to them, you'll never amount to anything. You're not good. You're not anything good about you. Can you actually minister to those people? Somebody says, you know, that you never amount to anything. You'll never amount to anything. Can you minister to them? Can you minister to a family like those that went to that uh, uh, pit down there and up yonder, and, and never them lost their lives with that gas. Up here, there's many nice folks. Can we minister to people? What are you going to say to people? What are you going to say to them? That's really what I want to know. What are you going to say to them? I've had to deal with some people just recently. And... Uh, it's just their prayers were not answered. They didn't get what they thought they was going to get. What do you do? I asked this question. What God asked is anything too hard for the Lord. Nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing, Jesus said. You know how much nothing is? Nothing. But it's going to take faith to get nothing working. Ain't it really? We can loose those people in bondage. You know, I was thinking, there's people that are slandering tongues has caused people to leave our church. 
because you get there and all the gossip and tail bearing and railing and so forth. And if you're not careful, you can sit there and be a judge. Judge, not you be not judged. Let the Lord take care of that. You get out there and minister to people. Some of the people that used to be against me are not against me anymore because they found out there was more to it than they thought. I'll tell you what, we got a lot of people out there with a mouth flying in every direction. But you and I have the ability to remit all those things. And you don't know, you got to remit this stuff. Oh, I, I'm not coming to your church here. Uh, I tell you, brother, uh, that Sabbath, uh, that all passed away with the apostles. And Jesus rose again from the dead, you know. And you sit there and argue with them. They had no argument to it. Just let them go. I'm not going to argue with them. I, I've learned a long time ago not to argue. It just doesn't do any good. You know, Lester was a man I knew. Very conservative Mennonite man. I mean, very, very conservative. And he would talk to me and was very, very religious. And one day, Lester started running around with other women beside his wife. And I was the only man that he could talk to. No, he wouldn't talk to nobody, but he talked to me. I couldn't get near him, but I could talk to him. He'd accept me all the way. I was the only one that I know of he accepted. But one of the things, he made a request. When I die, I want nothing to do with church. So don't have my funeral in the church. Please don't. How you like that? Can't get him. Can't get him. It was discouraging to me. It was sad to me. But it really was that way. If we're going to think on that, you, it's time to cry, but it's also time to wipe those tears away and get going again. There's somebody out there that's going to make a difference. I've watched those people that you thought never could be saved, got saved too. So let's get the, our faith going. Let's not think about all of our failures and shortcomings and how weak we are and we're just a bunch of uh, uh, what you call it and you know, you know the thing I think about is that a seer uh, came to Hananiah, uh, the seer told King Asa, uh, and listen to that. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. How about that? The eyes of the Lord has gone through and to and for right now to those who want power. We can't do it without power. That's chronic, 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He's looking for somebody. Young people, he's looking for somebody. Can he find you? Can he use you? He needs somebody to bind, somebody to lose, somebody to remit, somebody to love, somebody to stay out there and help. I'll tell you what. I just really think tonight, I just really want to encourage you folks. I want to encourage you. We can do it. I want us all to think about this. Put the word I. Now you, you, you know, we've been taught you don't use the word I. 
and you don't use the word I. I want to tell you something. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I, me, I, me. Now, after a while, I'm going to have somebody thrilled to, to speak those words. We're all going to repeat it, all of us. And I'm going to ask Brother Kevin to come up here now. And what we're going to do is I can do